dikontrol ya. So good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Fajar uh, Punama from Human Interface and Cyber Communication Laboratory, and I thank you, uh, my supervisor and the rest of my and the rest of the professors for giving me the opportunity to present my master thesis entitled "Portable and Synchronized Distributed Learning Management System in Severe Network Regions." And so uh, this is the outline of the presentation. I uh, have to apologize to you all that I left the great detail of this presentation into the supplementary slide because our time is only 12 minutes. So straight with the introduction that my course is about, uh, that my uh, master's thesis is about an online course. So different from a conventional course which have to be conducted face to face, the online course can be conducted at anywhere at any time and with computer devices connected on the internet. And so the motivation of my thesis is to increase the accessibility of that online course. It can be either in, by improving the information, commerce, and technology infrastructure that we walk away, or the more convenient and faster way is to implement a distributed learning management system. So as illustrated on the map of Indonesia, that the servers are distributed or spread across the network, uh, across the regions. So that all the people can uh, assess the course locally, and the problem, the however, the next problem is to how to keep the data in the system and the learning management system uh, up to date, or in other words, the synchronization between the server. And on this thesis, I uh, highlighted two problems, which is the first one is performing synchronization in a no network connectivity environment where usually uh, synchronization need to be conducted online. And the second problem is a duplicate data transfer in the synchronization process. As you can see that on this map of Indonesia that the, re the network is already severe, but having a duplicate data in the synchronization, it will just prove an unnecessary burden to the network. And so we can define the objective of my thesis is to enable synchronization in a severe network environment and to reduce the redundant data transfer. And frankly, that the solution is mentioned on this slide, which is for non-network connectivity, is to grant the distributed learning management system physically mobility function. And for duplicate data transfer is to apply incremental synchronization technique. And for but the limitation of this thesis is everything is experimental and most of them are concepts. And on the next section of portable and distributed learning management system is to tackle the problem of performing synchronization in a no network connectivity environment. As you can see illustrated on this map of Indonesia that the server on the more red regions on a bad network connectivity we have, might have a difficulty to connect to other servers and thus making it difficult to perform synchronization. And so, though there is a great detail in this, but I just show you the solution to the problem that I, to the problem that I highlight, that uh, to replace these servers with a hand carry server. And so, by replacing this server with a hand carry server, we can, the server can search for an area with a network connectivity, and then uh, it will connect to other servers and then it will perform a synchronization. After it move, after the synchronization is done, it will move back to its original location. So in short, by granting the servers the function to physically mobilize to find the network connectivity, we can net the objective of enable synchronization in severe network region. And so the implementation can be first maybe manually can by the administrator carrying the server to uh, uh, connect area or we can be carried by a vehicle 
all I prefer the most latest modest modern technology is to carry the server using a is to fly the server using a drone. So how is it possible to carry the server? Because the hand carry server is uh, very small; they can fit into the size of your pockets, and uh, it's very light. In addition, it's a uh, low power consumption. So you, for example, you have a power bank that can supply a mobile phone. For example, it's a twenty thousand milliampere hours of light bulb. It can supply up to uh, thirty one hours. Although with its convenient many conveniences, it has its limitations in its resource, such as uh, central processing unit and random access memory, and which limits the process. And here we did uh, just a small uh, stress testing on the hand carry server, which back then it was a Raspberry Pi 2 Model B, that we fed many concurrent users into the hand carry server and we examined the response time. Um, but there is a there is a great deal detail of discussion that we saw, but let me get to the point that when it's above 85 users, the hand carry server uh, stopped working, and the which means that it reached the absolute limitation of the hand carry server. So moving on, the next topic is the synchronization in distributed learning management system is to tackle the problem of a duplicate data transfer in full synchronization process. So when doing a synchronization default. The master doesn't care how much the slave actually already has. So even though the slave, well, for example, on the very bottom of this slide, there is already have a 900 megabyte of cores from the one gigabyte in the master, it will just send the whole one gigabyte of, gigabyte of cores. And 900 megabyte of data is actually a duplicate, which is a uh, unnecessary and a waste of the network traffic. But if we use uh, incremental data synchronization technique. The concept is that the master is able to identify how much the slave already has, how much and which data the slave already has, and so the master can filter uh, the that data and only send the necessary data only, which is more efficient on the network. And so my supervisor, Dr. Royana, Dr. Pandi, and their teams, they implemented their concept into uh, sharing learning contents in a Moodle system. So this, uh, they call it the dynamic content synchronization, which is actually a synonym to, almost a synonym to this one, but the meaning is that the course is uh, revised every time, and every time the course is revised, updates are sent to the other servers. And here they draw a model of the dynamic content synchronization, where there is a Moodle system on uh, two different machines. One is on the master and one is on the slave. And their method of synchronization is to synchronize the database. So they convert the Moodle tables to the mean of hashing into the synchronization table. And then after that, the slave synchronizer on the slave subsystem will, will check to the master synchronizer to see whether the synchronization table in the slave is consistent with the master synchronization table or not. If the synchronization table is not consistent, and I mean, if there is a part that is found that is not consistent, then that part is sent to the slave uh, uh, slave table, only that part of the inconsistent table, and making that synchronization table uh, consistent. And then it converted back into a Moodle table, which means it will be update the contents. And although that the dynamic content synchronization today, it works on Moodle 1.9 and 2.2, 2.0, my original intent is to make a uh, software application to be more compatible with a uh, more version of Moodle. I have to make an application for 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, up to 3.3, but I've, uh, I've heard it's very tiring to develop and make a, each uh, separate application. And so I moved to another approach which is called the dumb and upload based synchronization model. So this dumb and upload based synchronization model will work on all versions of Moodle, just one software application, because we utilize the export and import feature that exists in the LMS. So instead of uh, synchronizing directly the database and directory, we first use the export and import feature to export the contents of the database and directory into a structure format an independent file on an archive, independent from the LMS. We, and then we synchronize these two files. And 
and after that we, we after we synchronize this two file we import it back into the LMS to perform an update. And so the for example the incremental synchronizer you need to use a remote file differential algorithm one of them is the Arsene algorithm though the great detail is uh, too much to be shown on this slide but in the supplementary five slide if you are interested but the uh, surface is that like this the slave and the old file and the master and the new file the slave is the signature to send to the master and the master use the signature to calculate the difference between the new file and the old file and the difference will send to the old file updating the old file to the new file then we the And then we did an experiment on a on a solving the positive topics and four kind of modules, and these are the steps that I showed you before. And for example, and at least they have a uh, learning content, uh, materials, uh, quizzes, forums, and this and assignments. And the result, and we give the students a scenario that the master have three of the topics and slave only have two, and the site that we want to get is around two megabytes. And so the, to evaluate the internal data synchronization is to see how much you get data is actually eliminated. So since we are running out of time, so we did the LMS uh, the synchronization on other than Moodle and other LMS as well. And the result is that uh, around 97 to 98% of the average of the duplicate data eliminated, which meets the objective of eliminating duplicate data transfer during or uh, synchronization. And you can say is uh, almost all of the data is uh, eliminated. So to complete this work, is that the hand-packing server is the solution to non-active environment, and the ingram law synchronization is the solution to the data transfer. I have a lot of the work, but these are three three of these my publication issues on this thesis. But I have other publication, but it's not this. This is not dated. So thank you. Okay. So uh, let's open to the uh, question or comment. So based on this data, the assumed number of students is lower than 85. I mean, 85 is actually the absolute limit. If you reach over 85, the Westbury Pi will shut down. But the limit for the course is not actually defined by this absolute limit. It depends on the administrator, teacher, or the one who is conducting the course, what is their uh, tolerable response time. So the response time is how much that uh, is actually a service time or a queuing time. So this is the maximum response time, is meaning that uh, how, uh, how long is the last queue? Meaning that uh, out of, uh, for example, 85 students, one person will, will wait for 100, and 100 seconds to load a page. Yeah, so 100 seconds may be too long, so it's up to you. Uh, is it uh, 20, uh, 25, or if it's not up to you, we, can, we need to search for a literature how much is the uh, tolerable response time. Most days is uh, under 20 seconds. So, uh, after use of the new system, the uh, uh, more uh, small, up, small number of students can access. Yes, so for this, uh, this one is uh, unfortunately using a hand carrying server is, is still lower than a laptop. So my future work for this is to actually have to increase this, uh, have to increase the performance of this uh, hand carrying server, maybe through means of algorithm and I'm actually working with a normal one. Maybe we can integrate the FPGA into the Raspberry Pi, but I will learn more than that. Uh, 
Every server will uh, serve out for Windows content. Uh, yes, it can. Uh, back then, it was actually for a quiz only for a quiz session. Uh, it was a uh, content, but there was no learning material and stuff. But only was conducted for for doing a quiz. But recently, out of this topic, I tried using a model, and it actually worked. But if like um, many users are accessing the server, it's very slow. Okay. But if, uh, the uh, yes. Uh, Cluster, yeah. Yes, so it's a very cheap, like a thirty dollar and low power consumption. But we have to actually consider whether if a many Raspberry Pi can is a is a cheaper than a laptop. If it's a more expensive than a laptop, then a laptop is preferred. The the advantage of Raspberry Pi is that you can carry it into your pocket and easier in in uh, this kind of uh, in the in Indonesia environment but the network is very sensitive. Okay. Thank you. One of the advantages uh, is the battery operation. Okay, well, because of the uh, battery uh, which is so often in the we would like to use the LMS to be able to Network and to the power just to have the issues. So, still, my help is just like to have a standard with the same content. Is it possible to use a solar power battery? Maybe in the basic. <laughs> well, in the nature, we can make a battery and make the converter, and then we can just make the right uh, power system. Uh, we can just uh, replace this power bank with uh, solar. But we just need to make a small one. It's not. It's no point if we make a big solar power. Right? This is green there. <laughs> Any other comments or questions? Thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, my question is: In uh, your experience, how often do you have? Uh, my thinking is that the frequency at which you have these updates is uh, affect the network. Uh, for example, considering the anti-tariff, uh, the frequency of updates may be weekly. It will be a bit inconvenient to use the anti-tariff. Yes, so your problem, so what you said is the main problem of anti server. Normally, if we use a regular server, a non-back server, it it wouldn't uh, drop the performance, but in a hand carry server, the more you, the more frequent it is, the more resource you use on the hand carry server. So, using a hand carry server may be a disadvantage in the term of uh, frequent. But as my experience, uh, updating a course or a re revision, not like the as a student, but the professional course, they are usually rarely updates. Updates may be like a, every year, only once a year or every two weeks. Yeah. That is what is in the university. Only maybe in private sectors and stuff, they update like weekly or daily. If it's like that, then it's still a disadvantage. Okay. I think I almost have a timer. Okay, four minutes. Okay, short question. Comments? Can you make the quicker using the Raspberry Pi? Yes, uh, I recently tried to make a quicker on the Raspberry Pi, but if uh, if the remote, if, if we buy a lot of remote, it works. But in my condition in Indonesia, I would like to use like a Android to connect to the Raspberry Pi. The Android meaning that we uh, simulate the feature on the Android where we have the button, but currently I'm having a trouble finding the software. But if using a remote, we tried that it, it's actually working. Now I'm facing trouble with using an Android. So we were we used to check in the attendance of this past year and they realized that the local connection only is a bit far. Yeah, so if they are connected to the internet, still they may access from the other place. Yeah.
yes, yes. Uh, this month is only the radius. If they don't come, they won't attend. That's the other advantage of this as well. Thank you. 